Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, so this is pretty famous, right? Right away, this image, or this for this drawn depiction, right? Churchill, you know, with the signature, uh, Hitler's signature, and, you know, we're good, we averted war, and then stuff happens. Okay, original link to the video, top of the description, right below that, link to the Discord, would love to have you. Click on the link. Let's do it. Preemptive like, simple history, awesome channel. Let's do it. The Munich Agreement. How the West gave Czechoslovakia to the Nazis. Toss it. September 30th, 1938. October 28th, 1918. Czechoslovakia declared its independence following the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in World War I. Within the new state structure was a mix of ethnic groups and territories, all with different historical, political, and economic traditions. Most of the territory was inhabited by Czechs and Slovaks, but Aha. So, um, I, I, you know, learning about Prussia and Austria, like who would be the, the main German control, like who would unify the German states or who would control the German population in Europe? Obviously, Prussia won that war, won that battle, war. Um, but uh, it, it, it's something I paused because it's something obvious, but I didn't think of. And so, obviously, Hitler wants to annex parts of Czechoslovakia that he thinks contains ethnic Germans, and 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 so that's why he wanted, along with Austria uh, itself. Okay. More than 20% of the population were ethnic Germans, roughly 3 million people, the majority of which resided in the Sudetenland, a strip of land bordering Germany and Austria. Many of the Sudeten Germans heavily opposed the Czechoslovak government and its policies and wanted to join Austria or Germany. Sorry, what does Sudeten mean? Sudetenland, Sudetenland. Sudetenland. So it doesn't have a literal translation. Uh, hold on. Um, uh, uh, German to English. To Dayton. Land. Okay, maybe it, it doesn't mean something. Okay, never mind. Germany. Operation Constitution of the new country called for the equality of all citizens. The political leaders had obvious preferences towards Czech and Slovak nationalism, which saw violence and heavy anti-German sentiment against the Sudeten Germans. Ultimately, the government resorted to violence to quell civil conflicts between the two regions and proceeded to fully integrate the region by September 10, 1919. In the years that followed, some progress was made to integrate the Sudeten Germans and other minorities in Czechoslovakia, but they remained largely underrepresented in the government and the army. This was further exacerbated by the Great Depression, which hit the highly industrialized Sudeten Germans more than most. By 1936, 60% of the unemployed in Czechoslovakia were German. Meanwhile, in Germany, the National Socialist That'd be an interesting uh, what if history or alternate history. Uh, if what if the uh, the Great Depression never happened? The award German. Meanwhile, in Germany, the National Socialist Party had come into power. A key pillar of Hitler's foreign policy was to unite all German speaking people into one collective Reich. As such, Hitler created plans to reunite Germany with his own homeland, Austria, as well as taking control of the Sudetenland. In 1933, Konrad Henlein founded the Sudeten German Party, or SDP, in Czechoslovakia. The SDP soon captured two-thirds of the votes in ethnic German districts, and by 1935 was the second largest political party in the country. It's unclear whether or not the Sudeten German Party was initially established as a branch of the Nazi Party, but what is clear is that in the years that followed, the Nazis became a strong supporter and financier of the party. Encouraged by the support, the German minority living in the Sudetenland began demanding its own autonomy from Czechoslovakia. They claimed that they were being oppressed by the national government. In 1938, emboldened by the Anschluss, Nazi Germany's annexation of Austria, Hitler met with Henlein and established a paramilitary organization consisting of ethnic German citizens of Czechoslovakia. 
They were housed, trained, and equipped by the German army to conduct terrorist operations against the Czechs. Although a surprise invasion was rejected by the Nazis, Hitler continued to make antagonizing speeches demanding that the Sudetenland was united with Germany. War now seemed imminent. After the horrors of World War I, however, neither France nor Britain were prepared to defend Czechoslovakia and wanted to avoid all conflict at all cost. The Prime Minister of Britain, Neville Chamberlain, was especially opposed to any conflict. His foreign policy was centered on appeasement, which involved giving military, political, and territorial concessions to Germany in order to prevent war. This was in part due to Chamberlain's belief that Britain was still unprepared for a war. Indeed, a report by British chiefs. Like, if you think about it during, like, n like nowadays, right, with, you know, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, you know, they were like, oh, the Donetsk, Luhansk region is, is part of Russia, and we're reclaiming it. And, um... Belief that Britain was still on... But all of these, you know, Britain's not ready for war, so the appeasement... You're just gonna look really weak, and I don't know what the alternative is. I mean, if if you if you don't want if you're not ready to go to war, you're not ready to go to war, and so you can't exactly have a you know like combative posture when talking to someone like like a country like Germany that is clearly ready for. But I mean, you just look weak this way. I, but then I don't know the alternative, so I don't know. Never that war. This was in part due to Chamberlain's belief that Britain was still unprepared for a war. Indeed, a report by British chiefs of staff said that Britain would have been unable to forcibly prevent Hitler from taking Czechoslovakia. Chamberlain also resented giving in to these conditions. According to French Prime Minister Daladier, it made Chamberlain's blood boil to see Germany getting away with it time after time and increasing her domination over free peoples. Appeasement at the time, however, seemed like the lesser of two evils. Yeah, okay. I, I, I can go with that. Okay. In April 1938, Chamberlain met with Daladier to discuss the ever-escalating situation. Chamberlain saw no way to prevent Hitler from destroying Czechoslovakia if he chose, and argued that Prague should make territorial concessions to Germany. Both leaders believed peace could only be maintained if the Sudetenland was handed over to the Nazis. In mid-September, Chamberlain traveled to Germany and met with the- Guys, I don't- uh, let's try not to think in hindsight. Like, I, I like to, like, put yourself in the shoes of Chamberlain. If, if we're gonna call him, you know, um, if he was, you know, uh, you know, that- Given the information here, I don't know if he exactly made the wrong decision. And so, I, I don't think he's being incompetent or anything. But at the same time, maybe it would have been better to say, well, if you go in there, then it's war, and just see what they would do, because I wouldn't see an alternative. So, so that means Chamberlain must have thought that, okay, war is maybe not going to happen. Maybe he'll just take Austria and take Czechoslovakia and then stop, which I don't know how naive that was, because I'm too convoluted with with information that that we know from looking back in history Führer Hitler agreed not to take military action without any further discussion Chamber I both leaders believed peace could only be maintained if the Sudetenland was handed over to the Nazis in mid-September Chamberlain traveled to Germany and met with the Führer Hitler agreed not to take military action without any further discussion Chamberlain proposed that all areas of Czechoslovakia that were more than 50% German should be turned over. The Czechoslovakians, however, were not consulted, but the government was forced to accept the proposal anyway on September 21st. The next day, Chamberlain flew again to Germany to meet Hitler. To his dismay, Hitler had increased his demands. In addition to occupying the Sudetenland, Hitler now wanted all Czechoslovakians to leave the area by September 28th, which was just one week away. The Czechoslovakian government, the British cabinet, and the French all rejected the idea, and the sides began to mobilize for an imminent war. In one final last-ditch attempt to avoid a conflict, a desperate Chamberlain convened a four-power conference to settle the dispute. 
On September 29, 1938, Chamberlain, Hitler, Daladier, and the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini met in Munich. Hitler Boschetti. Sorry. Daladier and the Italian dictator Benito ah. Mussolini met in Munich. Hitler was angry and felt humiliated that he was now at the mercy of the three powers arbitration. He refused to allow any Czech diplomats into the meeting. A deal was reached in less than a day, and the four leaders signed the so-called Munich Agreement. The agreement allowed the German army to occupy the Sudetenland, and an international commission would decide on the future of all other disputes. The freaking Seinfeld is on way too loud. Area, Sudetenland, and an international commission would decide on the future of all other disputed areas, including the areas that Hungary claimed as their own. Chamberlain and Hitler also signed a paper which declared their desires to resolve their differences through diplomacy rather than war. Once again, the Czechoslovakians were not consulted. France and Britain told Czechoslovakia that they could resist Germany alone or submit to the agreement. Under pressure, they chose to submit. On October 5th, the president of Czechoslovakia, Edvard Benes, resigned from his position after realizing that his country was facing collapse. Chamberlain shortly returned to Britain after the agreement had been signed. He was famously seen waving the declaration in the air while announcing, peace for our time. This was, of course, highly ironic considering the events that followed shortly. Importantly, the Sudetenland was not only the home of... So I have a big question here. The biggest question of the video so far is how did Britain, France, US, um, Russia just uh, maybe I don't know as much about Russia, but um, I mean, the Japanese have been uh, you, you don't even have to take the Japanese into it because you don't know that that's going to turn into a world war. But clearly the world wasn't like th this wasn't like a oh, my God moment. 1939, they're invading Poland like there were so many over a decade or maybe less maybe like okay not a decade say six years five years um by 1939 of clear german aggression and rearmament and however much you don't want to go back into a world war how are they not ready for a conflict how is germany ready but the allies aren't germany lost world war one how how are they, like, good to go and the power, so strong and then they go and destroy Europe and tear through France and everyone is just like, huh? Huh? What? Like, I, hindsight can make it harder to place blame on people. But at a certain point, it's like, come on. How, how, did, how are you not ready for war? How is the loser of the first one more ready than the winners. I don't get it. It of three million ethnic Germans, but also contained two thirds of Czechoslovakia's coal resources, seventy percent of its iron, and seventy percent of its electrical power store. Czechoslovakia was home to a number of munition and armor-producing facilities, most notably the Skoda factory. This was a major manufacturer of guns, tanks, and artillery. The German military utilized many of these products, and the Czech designs were later transitioned into German designs. The Sudetenland the was Czechs also where Czechoslovakia had built expansive defensive border fortifications. Without those resources and defenses, the country was extremely vulnerable to a German invasion and total domination. Indeed, only one month after the Munich Agreement came into fruition came the first Vienna Award. This saw largely Slovak areas in the south of Czechoslovakia go to Hungary. Nazi Germany and Italy had long sought a non-violent way to support Hungary's territorial claims, returning areas that it had lost after World War I. With Czechoslovakia on its knees, the country had no choice but to give up the land. Similarly, a part of the country in the Northeast was occupied and annexed by Poland under the pretense of protecting ethnic Poles. On March 14, 1939, Czechoslovakia lost more land as Slovakia announced complete independence. This came after Hitler convened with a newly formed autonomous Slovak government and pushed for the unanimous agreement to separate from Czechoslovakia. The following day, another region, Carpatho, Ukraine, announced its separation from the country. 
fearing complete annihilation, the Czech Prime Minister asked Hitler to protect what remained of the nation. Hitler obliged, creating the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. In the end, Hitler would betray all those he had dealt with, and by September 1944, all of Hungary, Poland, and Slovakia were occupied by the German army. At the time, the Munich Agreement was celebrated in Europe for preventing a war, but in effect had marked the end of Czechoslovakia. The agreement emboldened Hitler's and Chamberlain's policy of appeasement, but was ultimately... It literally marked the beginning of the war, <laughs> rather than the end. ...ultimately discredited when Nazi Germany invaded Poland in 1939, triggering the okay, second... I shouldn't say literally. It's literally is already a, a term used too often, and it wasn't... It was, uh, you know what I mean. ...discredited when Nazi Germany invaded Poland in 1939, triggering the Second World War. The Munich Agreement is now remembered in history as a byword for the futility of appeasing aggressive totalitarian states. Oh, yeah. Oh. He just wiped the floor with all of you. All of you. It, it's pathetic. Uh, and, uh, um, it's hard for me to understand how Germany is so ready and everyone else is not after getting destroyed 20 years prior. But, you know, the country getting, you know, all of the... Close my mind, and I, I need, and I need to learn why. You know, um, cool video, awesome channel, simple, simple history, great. I have a few more of these videos kind of set up, ready to to watch that I that I saw that were interesting on the channel. Coming up soon. Hope you're all doing well. If not, emotions are fickle, my friend. Don't worry. Chin up. You'll be good soon. Bye, guys.